where everyone can see the yes okay perfect good so uh good afternoon uh, first of all i want to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to this uh, interesting seminar i'm really happy to be uh, here again uh, uh, presenting the last results of our ck project uh, so thank you very much um, I also want to highlight that even if it's me who will be talking today, uh, this is not just my work, but also from uh, Fatima Sanchez Blanco and Jersey Oleksiak, uh, who did the uh, study of the materials, the pottery from the necropolises uh, in this area. So this is also uh, their work. And I'm happy that Jersey, I think, is attending the seminar. So for any question regarding the, the materials, he uh, can provide more details about that. So uh, this is a three authors work. And uh, again, also another idea that I want to remark is that uh, what I will introduce today here is uh, a work in progress, a work in progress, uh, meaning that uh, we are kind of newcomers to this uh, subject of the um, funerary practices in the Eastern Desert. And uh, well, uh, what I will do basically is to introduce the uh, results of our last two seasons uh, in Guadisicate regarding the study of the uh, necropolises of, uh, of the area. But of course, uh, after the presentation, uh, you have any uh, suggestion or comment uh, that will be that would be really uh, welcomed. Uh, okay, so uh, what I will do today is try to um, talk about these uh, preliminary results uh, about the survey and detailed documentation of the uh, necropolises of uh, Wadi Sikate, which is one of the parts that we've uh, been uh, working on uh, within this uh, Sikate project, this joint uh, archaeological mission between the Polish Center of Mediterranean Archaeology and the uh, Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona. Uh, so basically, what uh, we'll try to do is to uh, show uh, these uh, first ideas, first hypotheses, first uh, results about uh, all these uh, funerary areas uh, in the Esmaragdos, in the region of the Esmaragdos, uh, that just to introduce uh, geographically this, this region, uh, is uh, this area that can be um, more or less uh, uh, equalized to the uh, current uh, Wadil Gemal National Park, uh, near to Bernike, near to the Red Sea in the eastern desert. Uh, and that is an area that was known in the classical sources as uh, this the region because it was the only uh, known source for uh, emeralds, uh, what uh, uh, we know as emeralds that are the uh, green version of the uh, mineral of beryl. Uh, so that is why the, this area was uh, interesting uh, for the, uh, especially for the Romans. And uh, well, there you can see that uh, since the beginning, especially from the first century uh, AD, uh, they uh, constructed the extensive network of settlements dedicated to the extraction and commercialization of uh, emeralds and uh, between them uh, our focus has uh, been put on the site of uh, CK that you can see there uh, which is probably the most important uh, settlement within this uh, area um, just uh, to give a reminder about this uh, settlement the, the CK the ancient Senskis uh, it is an extensive settlement uh, dedicated to exploitation of, of burial emeralds with a chronology that lies between the first century to the seventh, eighth century AD. And this is something important because what we're seeing during these last seasons is that the occupation of this site is uh, increasing uh, later, it's uh, more and more uh, late. So we are having uh, materials and levels that seems to point to uh, occupation until the seventh, eighth century, uh, even beginning of the Islamic period. And some, this is something that will be uh, related to the, uh, these uh, necropolises. So uh, we have uh, an extensive site with more than 150 structures, including some well-preserved buildings. And for example, we have uh, at least uh, four temples, among other interesting things. And of course, uh, as I said before, this is not an, uh, an isolated uh, settlement, but uh, it is linked with other close mining settlements like uh, Middle and North Cicade, Nugurus, Gerun Harma, uh, among others. Uh, there you have some uh, the plan of the, the site with the Wadi Cicade uh, cutting it uh, uh, in two, uh, and with some of the uh, most impressive uh, structures in there, Southern Temple, Large Temple, uh, some of the complexes that we've been working on, or the small temple that, in fact, uh, we have uh, excavated this last uh, season. And you have a couple of views of the, in this case, the, the western slope and the eastern slope of the uh, site. But what we want to talk about uh, today is the uh, funerary areas, the necropolises of uh, Cicate. 
Uh, so when the first uh, archaeological works started there, uh, directed by Stephen Said Botham at the beginning of the 2000s, they identified a couple of necropolises uh, in Sikate, what we now call the uh, East uh, Necropolis, that is all this uh, funerary area there, and another one that is uh, farther south, that is smaller, uh, that we call the South uh, Necropolis. Uh, at that moment, uh, already Steve uh, was wondering uh, if uh, there could be more uh, tombs uh, in this area, because such an extensive settlement like Sikate, uh, with just one, this, uh, this uh, necropolis of more or less 100 tombs, uh, it seemed uh, quite small. Uh, so, uh, one of the ideas that he had uh, when we arrived there in 2018 and we started working uh, in this area was to see if we could find more uh, funerary areas. And uh, in fact, what we discovered in 2021, yeah, uh, was that there is another large uh, uh, necropolis, funerary area that we call the necropolis southeast. So there you can see the map, uh, settlement is in the middle in this area, and there you have this large uh, uh, funerary area, the necropolis east, there you have the smaller one, the necropolis south, and this uh, new area, uh, necropolis southeast, that as far as we know, it is not published, uh, it was untouched uh, until that moment. In fact, uh, the, one of the good things was that uh, it was never really surveyed, so we could uh, recover a lot of material uh, of pottery coming from this uh, space. Uh, there you have uh, what, what we did during these uh, two last years was to uh, document uh, these uh, funerary areas in detail. So uh, we uh, went, we surveyed all the area, we took pictures of all the tombs, uh, we took measurements, uh, we put a GPS point, and um, thanks to that we have now these uh, uh, these uh, maps that you can see here, for example, the, the East Necropolis with all these uh, tombs uh, put in several clusters that you can see uh, all around this area, some of them really close to the settlement, as we will see later, and with a total of 110 tombs, and of course, all of them broke. This is one of the main problems that we have uh, in this desert with these uh, tombs that someone has already mentioned. Uh, for the moment, we haven't been lucky enough to find just a single untouched tomb uh, in the area, which of course, it's a problem to understand how the funerary practices worked uh, in this in this region. Uh, there you have the southeast necropolis, the, the new one that we've been documenting this uh, season, again with all these several clusters uh, of tombs, uh, in this case 101 roped uh, tombs, and with uh, an interesting uh, space, which is this one, circle in red, uh, which is a, a pottery garment. Uh, there below one of these uh, clusters of tombs, uh, we identified this natural platform, natural terrace, with uh, literally thousands of fragments of, uh, of pottery. Of course, you can imagine the, the joy of our uh, pottery specialist arriving uh, there. But uh, of course, this is something that is uh, hard to understand or to interpret. Uh, why there is this uh, pottery dam here? Maybe this is related with some funerary rituals. We don't know. Maybe some ritual, uh, funerary feast that, that after that implied the uh, destruction of the of the vessels, or maybe this is just an area where the looters uh, took the best uh, vessels and uh, broke them in there just to see if there is there was something inside, some jewelry, some emeralds. Uh, we don't know, uh, but it's quite interesting, of course, uh, because it, it provided a lot of materials that will help us to understand the chronology of the uh, the set of the necropolis. So. Uh, in the case of the South Necropolis, as I said before, there you can see it, uh, really small uh, necropolis, really different from the other ones, uh, really small, not in the mountains, but in the middle of the wadi, protected by this kind of uh, uh, terrace in there, just 14 uh, rope, really roped tombs, and almost no mater not materials, not just a single fragment of pottery. Uh, we think that probably this, uh, uh, this is not an ancient uh, necropolis. Uh, we, of course, we're not sure because we do not have materials, but the difference in the uh, features make us think that probably this is uh, later. This is some late uh, uh, addition. Uh, so we'll focus basically on the uh, information coming from the uh, east and southeast uh, necropolis. Uh, so total, a total of 225 uh, tombs, probably more. And this is something that uh, after five years uh, walking all this area, uh, we can uh, certify. Uh, at the moment that you go that you go uh, off from the uh, cicade, from the settlement, 
you start finding plenty of structures all around this area of the CK. So, and some of these uh, structures, of course, are uh, tombs, are graves. So uh, probably there are more of them, but whoever, uh, we are starting to have a more uh, normal, uh, more normal uh, number of tombs uh, related to this important settlement as is uh, CK. Uh, of course, as I said, for the moment, all the documented tombs uh, were robbed. So this is a problem for understanding, for example, the uh, funerary practices or, or rituals. Uh, the chronology, we'll come back later to that, but for the moment, we consider a chronology between the fourth to the seventh uh, century AD. And as you will see, we have uh, several typologies uh, uh, of tombs in this uh, necropolis. We've made a first uh, preliminary um, um, list of these typologies that we will see now. But uh, well, there's uh, uh, quite uh, interesting uh, variety of uh, typologies. And of course, again, another interesting issue is the uh, funerary ritual related to these, uh, to these uh, tombs that we will uh, come back later to that uh, also. So regarding the typologies and being uh, brief, uh, we have identified for the moment five types. Um, we are not, of course, the first to try to give a typology for these uh, tombs in the Eastern Desert. For example, we have the paper from Lasangi uh, in 2012 that I took because um, the, the categories that he uh, created can more or less be um, equal to some of our types. For example, type one that we are presenting here is quite similar to this, the type 2A that uh, Lasangi uh, presented. So in this case, what we have is a, this rock cut uh, burial chamber, chamber uh, framed by these large uh, schist stones. Uh, first covered this uh, burial chamber with some uh, stone slabs that at some points uh, were preserved, preserved, but most of them are uh, lost. And then after that, uh, they were covered by a, a tumulus of uh, local boulders. What is interesting is that, and this is something that is quite homogeneous with all the tombs that we have uh, identified there, is that the, the dimensions are quite small. And for example, in this type one, which is one of the most typical in, the, in, this, uh, in these necropolises, uh, the interior dimensions of the real chamber are quite small, uh, between uh, 60 and 80 centimeters of length and 40 centimeters of width. Which, uh, which is quite small, even for a, a contracted bulb. Uh, and uh, in the case of the tumuli, uh, the total dimensions of this type are more or less uh, around uh, 1.5 meters uh, of diameter. So uh, quite a small uh, structures. There you can see several of other examples, mm, quite destroyed, uh, as you can see, but there you can see quite well the, uh, the cuts in the, in the rock and the, uh, this structure made of uh, flat skist stones and the remains of the tumulus, and then here exactly the same, the, the structure and the remains of the uh, tumulus. Uh, other examples that are a little different because they, uh, they adapt to the place where they are. For example, uh, when you have this type of structure uh, on a slope, uh, they uh, did not make, uh, did not make a tumulus because it was not, uh, uh, it was not practical, no, no, it was not uh, good for this space, but they kind of build this uh, uh, tower type structure that you can see here. But the interior, the, the burial chamber, chamber is exactly the same. Um, there we have the type two that maybe can be compared to the type one from Lasangi. Uh, this is the other most typical uh, type uh, in these necropolises. Uh, and it is really a really simple structure, a uh, circular grave pit or, or just a cleaned or leveled area uh, covered by this uh, circular uh, tumuli of local boulders. boulders. Uh, the interior diameter, again, is really small, generally around 50 centimeters. Although, of course, we need to understand that most of these uh, structures are quite destroyed because of the, uh, the action of the looter. So, uh, it's not certain that the, these dimensions are the, the, the originals, but more, most of them are, are quite small again. No? And uh, regarding the tumuli, the uh, dimensions can uh, have, have a large variety uh, going from one to uh, three meters of, of length of diameter. Uh, there you have several examples uh, of these uh, really simple uh, structures. There you can see uh, at some moments uh, they just cleaned a circular area or leveled uh, a circular circular area and then uh, built the, the, the tumulus uh, on, on it. Uh, there you have other examples uh, in this uh, secondary wadi, not in the mountains. 
Uh, or for example, we have uh, another interesting examples that combine uh, these two types, type one and type two. For example, there you can see this type one, uh, uh, this uh, tower type, we can say, with the burial chamber. But above it, we have a type two uh, tomb with this, you can see there, the circular cleared area with the remains of the uh, small tumulus. Uh, of course, uh, it is hard to understand why they did that, because uh, it is impossible to uh, excavate uh, an untouched uh, tomb like that. But maybe that could be um, uh, an example of some uh, families being, being uh, buried together. Of course, it is impossible for the moment to confirm that, but that could be uh, an idea. Uh, then we have the type three, and that you can see uh, again also really simple. In this case, is uh, a rock cut burial chamber, but without this uh, flat schist stones structure, just with the uh, tumuli, uh, tumulus, sorry, uh, above it. Uh, again, really simple uh, structure, and as you can see, uh, really small dimensions. In this case, we have a larger variety, but uh, we have from eighty to one point ten, uh, eighteen centimeters to one point ten meters of length. Uh, by 40 to 60 centimeters of width and 20 to 45 centimeters of depth. But again, most of them are not uh, really large, are, are of small uh, dimensions. Uh, we have several examples, not a lot in this case, uh, both in the east and uh, southeastern necropolis. Uh, and then the, the fourth type, uh, which is also quite usual in, in this uh, area, is the one that uh, uses uh, natural cavities for uh, putting the, the, the remains of the deceased person. Uh, that you can see, they use these uh, natural cavities. This is not handmade, this is natural. And uh, they uh, covered or blocked this, this cavity with uh, a tumulus of local boulders. And in this case, we have a large variety of dimensions. They have a couple of better examples that you can see in the middle of the southeast necropolis, this cavity, and you can see it's still there uh, most of the tumulus covering this space, or in Middle Seacate, not in the necropolis, but we have another example in Middle Seacate with this uh, cavity uh, blocked by this, uh, by this stone. So this is another of uh, these uh, simpler um, types of necropolis. And, and finally, we have another uh, type, which is what we call uh, type five, and that uh, we are basically uh, trying to understand what this is. Uh, we have for the moment uh, called that uh, funerary houses with this question mark because it, is, because it is not sure at all. And the best example we have, in fact, the unique, uh, the only one in both necropolis is this case, uh, this tomb one in the East necropolis. As you can see, uh, this is a really nice building, partially preserved, partially built against the, the rock, uh, but partially built with these masonry walls, with this uh, chamber, uh, this uh, uh, courtyard, and this terrace or artificial platform uh, with the windows and all that. Uh, when uh, Stevenson both uh, took a look at that, uh, they said that that uh, this was a watchtower built over the, uh, the necropolis. Uh, in our case, we are not sure, sure about that because uh, it is quite strange to have um, a watchtower built uh, over this uh, tomb, because in fact, inside of the, of the of the room, you can see this perfectly nicely uh, type one uh, tomb. And uh, of course, uh, we have not excavated this space, so it is hard to understand the relations between the structure and the tomb. But for us, it is more probable that uh, this could be a, a watchtower that it was reused later as a uh, funerary space, or maybe why not? Uh, this could be uh, that a funerary house, a uh, structure built for uh, this concrete tomb. Uh, of course, it is impossible to know at this moment. We need to to excavate that to get more information. But it is another, a different uh, type of uh, a structure. And um, we have more examples just in the highest part of the uh, uh, eastern slope of the site, where we have some of these buildings, like this one. We have kind of 10 of these buildings that uh, seems again to be a uh, previous building that were used as funerary spaces. And what we find uh, inside is, as in this case, sorry, because the picture is not the best, but uh, I mean, the structures are not uh, really amazing. But what we can see is that uh, they used the tumble inside of these buildings to uh, create uh, several tumuli. And after the looting, of course, it affected all these tombs again, what we can uh, see, the remains, are these circular spaces 
with uh, the remains of the tumulus uh, or tumuli around. And it, this is one uh, of the only areas where we can find remains of boats. In fact, in all the tombs from the uh, south, uh, sorry, the east and southeast necropolis, almost not a single bone uh, was found. Uh, these are the only spaces where several small fragments, these white things that you can see there, there of bones were found in situ. Uh, and well, we have some nice examples. For example, this uh, this building where you can see this is a uh, tumulus uh, occupying almost all the length of the, the building, and that is quite well preserved thanks that uh, thanks to the fact, the fact that they did not destroy the tumulus for uh, robbing the tomb, but they put this hole in there and extracted whatever was uh, inside. Uh, so it seems that uh, there was some reuse of these uh, buildings uh, and maybe this watchtower tower that we've seen before uh, as funerary houses in a late uh, period. And this is another type of uh, funerary structure that we can identify in uh, CK. Of course, again, uh, at some point we would like to uh, excavate some of these buildings to have more uh, data about the stratigraphy, about the uh, the function of these spaces to see how this worked. Uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, some of these cases, you can clearly see that the buildings were sealed after the uh, introducing of, after introducing these, uh, these uh, tombs inside. So uh, it's quite logical to think about this uh, reuse of these buildings as uh, funerary houses or funerary areas. But this is something that of course needs more um, work. So um, a couple of uh, ideas regarding these uh, this, um, necropolises, apart from the general presentation of their uh, features. Uh, so uh, first uh, interesting point, the chronology. Uh, and this is where we will discuss the, the materials briefly. But as I said before, we have Jersey here that can uh, provide more details if anyone is interested. So uh, the study of the pre preliminary study of these materials uh, points to a, a chronology of uh, between fourth to seventh century AD. We have a large variety of forms in these tombs assemblages, um, and we must highlight that, of course, uh, it is complicated to link a concrete assemblage with a concrete tomb, because of course most of these materials were extracted and thrown from the inside of the tomb to break the vessels and see if there was something inside. And just in few cases, we can uh, have a dispersion of the materials that clearly is related, is coming from one uh, concrete tomb. So uh, we need to consider that. No? Anyway, uh, from the cases where, where it's, it was clear that some assemblages were related to one of these uh, tombs, what we can see is that typical assemblage coming from these tombs was uh, the one composed by uh, one or two liquid vessels, jacks, jugglets, strainer jacks, and a set of fine work bolts. Uh, it is interesting also to see that uh, in some, at some of these tombs, we have identified the presence of Eastern Desert Ware, which is something quite typical uh, in CK, in the excavated levels. Uh, in that case, we do not have uh, this material related to all the tombs. And that, that makes us uh, wonder if maybe that could be uh, used as a marker of ethnicity. As you know, this Eastern Desert Ware has been uh, linked directly to these uh, blemies, to these uh, nomadic tribes uh, from the area. Uh, and well, this is something that we need to think about uh, carefully and see if this could mark um, some uh, idea of ethnicity. Of course, this is not also certain for sure. For sure. We, we would need to excavate some of these stones. And another interesting uh, point is that several of the assemblages uh, seems to be related. And this is something that uh, we are still uh, working on because uh, Jersey was uh, uh, trying to um, study in detail these, uh, these uh, materials and look for parallels. But in some cases, it seems that uh, the materials would point to a really late uh, chronology, uh, 7th century AD. Uh, and this is interesting because of two ideas. First, because it reinforces this, um, this uh, uh, idea that I said before about this uh, more extensive chronology of the occupation of the site. You know, we thought or normal, normally we were thinking about a uh, settlement in CK that uh, arrived until the fourth, fifth, sixth more century. Now we are finding uh, materials levels that are pointing to a uh, uh, chronology arriving until the seventh or even eighth century, which is really interesting because uh, seems to indicate that 
we already know that in the beginning, at the beginning of the Islamic period, there was a continuation of the extraction of burial. But now it seems that uh, not only that, but only a continuation in the occupation of the site. Uh, of course, at a lesser extent, but uh, we have all these materials that seems to uh, make us think that we have to consider uh, 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 chronology that arrives until this seventh, maybe even eighth century. And maybe these materials from the necropolises could be another evidence for that. The other important idea related to this chronology of the necropolises is that um, it, it's exactly the same that we are finding uh, at CK, because almost all uh, the levels that we have excavated uh, at CK, in our case, and in the case of the excavation from uh, of, uh, Stevens and Botham, almost all the levels are related to this late period, fourth century and, and on. Almost uh, no materials, not levels related to uh, early Roman period. Uh, and this is interesting because it makes us think uh, about the uh, construction of the creation of the setup. Uh, we know for sure that the uh, destruction of burial started at least at the in the first century uh, AD, but it seems that the creation of a permanent settlement uh, at this at CK and probably at some other uh, settlements around uh, can only be uh, documented since the fourth century, uh, coinciding uh, with the um, uh, being at the same time that the sources uh, tell us that uh, the blemish arrived at the end. So uh, now what that we know that uh, probably the beginning of this extraction was quite. Uh, directly related to the Roman military, the Roman uh, uh, legions, uh, maybe the idea is that during this early Roman period, uh, there wasn't a, a permanent extensive settlement at CK because it was, there was no need for it, because most of the workers in the area uh, were from the Nile Valley. And then uh, they didn't need uh, to create a large settlement then. But when the blemish arrived there and took over the mines uh, since the end of the fourth century, uh, as they established, they settled themselves in the area. Maybe it was the moment to uh, be uh, to uh, build this uh, large settlement. So maybe the the uh, absolute absence of uh, tombs from the early Roman period could be another evidence to reinforce this idea that the uh, current settlement of Cicate uh, started at the, the fourth century. Uh, most of them, uh, most of it at, uh, at least. And of course, this is interesting coming from the chronology. Uh, several uh, images uh, about the material recovered. Uh, uh, there you can see some Asuan uh, red and white sleep bowls, uh, several uh, liquid vessels like strainer jugs, uh, flasks. Uh, also, there you can see other uh, Asuan bowls. And of course, some of these handmade pottery, some of these uh, Easter uh, desert ware fragments that we can find in the Necropolis, but also plenty of them uh, in the uh, levels excavated at uh, CK. And uh, to finish with my uh, presentation, with my talk, uh, just uh, a few ideas about the uh, funeral ritual. Uh, and of course, as I said before, this is really complicated to determine the type of funeral ritual because uh, for the moment, not a single uh, untouched tomb has been found. So uh, we need to find some uh, untouched tomb to excavate it and uh, see if we can confirm what kind of funerary ritual uh, was used there. Uh, of course, uh, these uh, necropolises are not strange to the, to the context. They are a continuation, a continuity of the uh, ring graves tradition that you can see uh, almost uh, everywhere in this uh, Egyptian or uh, Sudan Eastern desert. Uh, but of course, with some variations uh, in this local uh, space. And normally, what is more accepted is that this uh, funerary ritual was the inhumation with the uh, position of uh, the contracted body inside of the uh, tombs. Uh, it is not that I'm not, uh, I do not agree with that, but I just want to highlight that in the case of the uh, of the CK, uh, it is interesting to see that the small, really small dimensions of tombs make us think that, uh, was it possible to put uh, even a contracted body inside uh, of these, uh, these burial chambers? And uh, another interesting thing, we have found uh, almost not a single bone in all these uh, large necropolises. Uh, but I mean, not a single one, uh, except for these funerary houses uh, there. Is this something related with the conservation of the, these uh, bones, uh, with the looting of the tombs? This is not an area with a, a high level of acidity of the soil. So mm, I don't know. It is, it is uh, something that makes us think 
uh, a lot. Maybe at some point they could use the cremation as a funerary ritual. Um, that would not be logical, of course, because it's not the best space for using uh, cremation. There's not a lot of wood for using uh, or for doing cremation. But I don't know. It is something that we need to uh, try to think about it, to discuss. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, what would be more helpful would be to find an untouched tomb to confirm that uh, yes, the, that was inhumation uh, in these uh, in these tombs. And just to finish, the idea that uh, are those the necropolises of the Blemian people that the sources say that controlled the the emerald mines uh, since the end of the fourth century? Well, uh, again, it is not uh, easy to say that because the data that we have are uh, coming just for the survey and uh, not from excavation. But we think that probably at least part of these people uh, being buried there were part of this Blemian uh, population that arrived and took uh, over the mines uh, since the fourth century and, uh, and on. Uh, we don't know uh, until what extent, but uh, we think that the most logical uh, hypothesis is that, yeah, some of these uh, Blemian, uh, the Blemians, some of these Blemians were uh, buried here following the uh, funerary traditions that we can find uh, in examples uh, almost ar all the, around all the uh, Eastern there. So uh, I will uh, finish uh, there, just saying uh, thank you for your attention.